Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine acts as a hub for information, offering articles from archaeologists, detectorists and other specialists throughout the genre. Featuring many links, event info and news articles associated to archaeology and metal detecting. We also offer professional review services and promotion for books, resources, videos, documentaries, gadgets, equipment and much, much more. The magazine is run by the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community for the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community. So come visit us at archmdmag.com. That's archmdmag.com. And check out information from our media section with all the latest content, news from the Archaeology Channel, podcasts, and the YouTube channels that feature the now legendary Digger Dawn, The Man with the Hat, and Archaeo Duck, just to name a few. If you would like to offer an article, link, or inquire about other services, then pay us a visit at archmdmag.com and drop us a line. Welcome to the All Metal Mode UK podcast with your host Mike Hare and Dave Sadler. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show. Don't forget to check out archmdmag.com. On Facebook, you can follow us at All Metal Mode Podcast UK, Metal Detecting UK Dirt Fishing, Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine, Archaeology and Metal Detecting Group. Don't forget, please tell everybody uh, you know that's into metal detecting, into the hobby, about the, the podcast. We'd appreciate it. You can tune in live on Spreaker every Thursday at 8 p.m. You can you can also join us in chat. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit lost there for a second. You can join us in chat. If you can't catch the show live, you can tell your friends that they can come back anytime to Spreaker. They can listen to it on demand. They can download it. Uh, once the show is out there, within a few hours, you can find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and other affiliates. So uh, please get the word out. We would appreciate it. If you're tuning in and want to jump in chat, once the show gets started and you're, you're listening to it, uh, a box comes up along the bottom with your pause and play button and all that on it. If you click on that, you'll see a little chat bubble. Um, or it looks like a cloud. I always thought it looked like a cloud. I think it has changed a little bit. Looks, But it's, you'll see, see it. And uh, you just click on that. If you are new to chat, you will have to sign up. I, I believe you can just sign up through your Facebook account. You don't have to make up a password, wait on an email or anything crazy like that. So uh, anyhow, yeah, so um, there you have it. And we love having people in chat. So if you get a chance, jump in. Good evening, Dave. How are you doing? I'm not bad, Michael. You sound a bit not 100%. You know, I've got a Well, thanks for that. I'm glad to hear that you noticed that I, yeah, no, I, I've got a head. I've had a horrible headache for about the last hour. But no, I'm fine. I, I, it's, it's, it'll go away. I was sitting funny. I was doing some work on my computer, and oftentimes I get so caught up into what I'm doing, I don't realize I've got my head or my shoulders in a weird position. Next thing I know, I've got a headache. So we didn't get any anecdotes or or funny tales this week either. No, no, I don't. I, I did tell you, I did tell you guys about my trip last week, right? You certainly did. Yeah, he did. I couldn't remember telling that, but yeah, that was, I'm still on a high from that. I mean, that guy, that guy's got detectors from the sixties in his shop, although he works on current wow. stuff. I mean, it was just, uh, is that the one you were sat on his knee? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had a fun week, Mike, uh, the day, the morning after the show, I went to bed, got up, went to work and, uh, wrote me car off on the way to work. <laughs> I see that. Fantastic. Oh, you're okay. That's all that matters. Yeah, right? yeah, fine. I'm, it was, oh, I was only going slow, but there was a tractor coming the other way around the shop, bend on a country lane, and I introduced myself to the front tire of the tractor and wrote the fuck. So while I'm trying to kick the door open because it was seized shut by the wing, oh. uh, said driver decided to go. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Who's so, uh, it would have been? Well, it's probably my fault because obviously I what it is. There's lots of spring water, natural spring water on uh, what's called Bosley Cloud, and uh, the car sort of just because the road was wet, it, it skidded uh, straight into it. So it, it's probably well nobody's fault, but you know I was the one driving the car that skidded. So 
But got a new car last night, so all is good. Uh, Rodney Cook Memorial Marion Detect- Rally and the Detectable are fully happening. Uh, I've, um, I've got a lovely Freelander too, so it's nice and big, so I can put my bed that I made in there and go we are. You've disappeared, haven't you? Um, I'm having some gone. trouble oh, with Mike. I apologise. Well, while, while you're sorting that out, Mike, I will... Uh, I will. I will introduce uh, the Rodney Cup Memorial Rally a little bit in depth uh, for the readers this week. Next Thursday night, uh, obviously, people will start getting to the site. Luke's going to help put up the marquee and such like. So next week, we wouldn't probably be able to speak to anybody uh, from Rodney Cook Memorial. So the plan was for tonight to talk about it a little bit in depth for the first fifty minutes or so. So. Uh, in short, um, the Rodney Cook is the second year this is taking place, and it's down near Bath. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the rally is in aid of um, several different charities in in the Bath area for cancer. Um, Rodney Cook was Gary Cook, we've had on the show numerous times. Father, he sadly passed away, and uh, the support of everybody for Gary uh, decided to set up the, the memorial rally last year. Uh, that people there from Australia, America, Canada, and all over Europe, and of course everyone in the UK. Again, this is taking place uh, next weekend, uh, and I think it's from Friday. People will start arriving. I think Saturday morning because I've got to work away. And uh, we've been invited to have a stall on site, and not just that, we've been invited to uh, produce the third uh, edition of the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine paper version. So a hell of a lot of effort's gone into that by Luke because he's the one that understands the program. Having worked on it last year, he's created the magazine, which looks absolutely spiffing. Um, full kudos for Luke for what he's achieved there. I've not actually seen a physical copy, but he's got them all delivered to us, so he'll be bringing them up for the rally. Uh, there's lots going on next weekend. Uh, there's a free raffle, um, which people will get on the, the raffle tickets on login and the prize will be a full XP dais kindly donated by Gary Blackwell from XP Metal Detectors. Uh, there's live entertainment in the main marquee on both Friday and Saturday night uh, with a disco afterwards and hog roast as well. Uh, hot food, stone baked pizza, etc. all weekend and there's a bar or tea and coffee specialists also. Uh, as well as ourselves, there'll be XP, Leisure Promotions, Regtons, Treasure Hunting Magazine, Roman Remains, the National Council for Metal Detecting. I'll be glad to see them again, have a, have a nice chat with them, and Search Mag. Uh, so uh, w- we will also be launching our podcast while we're there, the big, uh, the big Metal Detecting podcast. We'll be launching that, that while we're there, so obviously people can tune in whilst they're uh, at night when they're sitting in the tent or people who aren't going, we can tune in and listen to what events have been occurring, what major events, if any, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we're looking forward absolutely greatly to this. Uh, this year they've decided to split the money for free charities. Again, the Cancer Care Unit uh, and also Click Sergeants, which is cancer and leukemia in children. And Starlight, a charity that provides children and their families with days out and trips as a respite from the treatment. Uh, obviously, on behalf of ourselves, and, and I'm thanking the organisers and Gary for inviting us along, we've also got to thank Pete Terrell of LP, uh, Viola Rutner from Rutus, Dilek Gunale from Mock de Macro, and Gary Blackwell, who've all helped uh, us put this, this free magazine together. So there'll be Every single person who gets through the door, if they come to our stall, you'll receive a free uh, magazine. Lots of interesting things in there, and uh, we're looking. I'm li- I'm looking forward, Mike. There's so many people who we speak to constantly through the chat room, through Facebook, Scotty B, uh, the debates, uh, more people than I, I could wish to remember who I've never met, and I'll be able to meet face to face and have a chat with them normally uh which which will be great fun so i'm looking forward to to doing that greatly so that's next weekend uh the rodney cook memorial rally now for people who can't go there is a just giving page uh who would like to donate to all the 
different uh, ch charities that I mentioned previously. So if you go on to Just Giving and uh, you look for the Rodney Cook Memorial Rally, that'll pop up there. Uh, and, and would you believe already, Mike, of the £20,000 target already, £1,850 have already been put into that and we're a week away from the event. Oh, so that's wow. fantastic. Yeah. So I really do hope that they break that target massively. Uh, so, yeah, that's next weekend, the Rodney Cup Memorial Rally. Please come and, come and speak to myself and Luke. Uh, Luke will be playing uh, with his machine here, there and everywhere. I'll be manning the stall entirely because I'll be too knackered to go walking around fields. <laughs> mm. hey, Plus, I've got, got so much, I've got so much to put in my car. Uh, I don't think I'll fit a metal detector in. Mm. Sorry, carry on, Mike. Uh, hey, you're a pretty big guy like me. I, I need you to do me a favor. What's that, Doc? When you see Scott Dubay, I want you to give him a big old hug and then squeeze his butt for me. Can you do that? I do that, but, right, I am renowned. And if everybody from work is listening, because I do have a few people who I work with pop up now and again on the uh, list to the podcast, mm -hmm. they will tell you that my, my general thing is either punching them where they shouldn't be punched or picking them up and squeezing them very tightly and jumping around like rad dolls, so... Uh, yeah. yeah. Either way, it just I'll, make sure I'll, you get a you get a good good handful of butt for me. Well, with Scotty B, I'll I'll actually do it upside down. I think that'll be far more fun. That, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Brief, briefly before we we introduce tonight's guest, uh, I'm just going to give you out the the news for this week. Now, the biggest news everybody knows. We'll get to that last because it's the most interesting. Uh, we discussed last week a gold seal ring that was found, a 13th century gold seal ring from the medieval period, which was found by a gentleman about 30 years ago. And while he was sorting out his shed, he found this ring. And, ooh, that's uh, – I'll have to get that anyway. Uh, it was it was highlighted that it was a lot more than, than people thought – that he thought originally. Now, it went to uh, auction this week at uh, Hanson's Auctioneers, now, um, I've not been on the site very often. I've only been on once or twice. And at the start of the show, while we were discussing things, uh, I popped on to find out how much this ring had actually gone for. Now, the estimate was 8,500 to 10,000. Unfortunately, it only had one bid at 6,000, so it probably didn't reach its uh, estimate and therefore didn't sell. Uh, but if anybody listening would like to, please go on to the historic and metal detecting auction uh, on Hanson's Auctioneers and Valuers. There's 48 pages. The coins I was looking at before we started talking were absolutely phenomenal. Uh, there's harness pendants, there's uh, other rings, there's brooches, annular brooches, the strap ends, you name it from a, from a high-quality metal detecting find. They're on there, and some of the prices that they, they are selling for are absolutely bewildering. So, uh Wow is all I can say to that. I'm, I'm scrolling through now while I'm talking to you, and it, it's just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, some of these finds. I'll send you the link, Mike, because obviously you seeing British finds, you'll be a bit gobsmacked yourself, I'd say. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, mass child sacrifice discovery has been made the largest in Peru. Uh, 227 bodies of children between 5 and 14 were found near the coastal town of Juan Chaco, north of Peru's capital of Lima. Uh, as I say when I'm on um, talking verbally on the on the audio, it's very difficult to tell people what things look like. You need to go and have a look at this if you're interested in that type of archaeology. There's some phenomenal photographs of these. This burial site, it really is nice. Uh, moving on again. Uh, the first interior shot to the HMS Terra shipwreck shows unusually tidy array of artifacts preserved for centuries. Uh, now, this is a obviously British ship, uh, and it's been discovered in, I think, Canada. And again, some absolutely fantastic shelves still with all the plates on. Uh, Unbelievable. And this, this set out from England in 1845. And, so, you know, the, the uh, what we call the, the blue and white, where the the, um, white, the blue and white, all on there, you can see perfectly. 
so this has been sent with ROVs into the cabins to have a look around and obviously turned up some fantastic images. Finally, the big news for the week and for quite some time, although, you know, there's been a lot of big stories popping up in, in the world of metal detecting over the past year or so. Two metal detectorists in Somerset have told of their shock at unearthing a hoard of coins depicting William the Conqueror, thought to be worth over five million English pounds. Adam Staples and Lisa Grace found the 2,528 silver coins in a Somerset field. The hoard shines fresh light on the aftermath of the Norman invasion and shows evidence of early tax evasion in the UK. Most people have heard that. Obviously, those who haven't, please pop along onto the news and uh, just Google it. You'll find it phenomenal. Beautiful coinage again. Uh, and now, finally, over to our guest this evening is a good friend of mine, Mr. John Webb. Uh, John is, uh, he's got a YouTube channel, the John 316 UK, and he also formed and runs the Coins, Relics and Fun Facebook group. Good evening, John. Good evening. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Hi, John. Good, good. Hi, Mike. How's it going? Oh, great. They're going great. Good, good, good. Well, I'll let Mike get into it because I've been talking non-stop for the past 15 minutes or so. So, Mike, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you have a preamble and a, a quick chat with my, uh, John before we, we kick off. Yeah, I would love that. Um, I'm John, I, like I told you, we just get right into it and get started. H- how long have you been metal detecting? Um, quite a few years. I mean, it started with my old man way back in the 90s. Mm. Um, then family stuff happened, so... You know, we just uh, missed it for a few years, but we got back into it about eight, nine years ago now. Mm. And know, obviously, it's it's not just uh, John, by the way. Uh, John's partner, Mandy Dale, uh, she also joins him in his exploits. Uh, I don't think John ever goes alone. Mandy's always with him. And I, I think she's also bringing him lots of cup of tea tonight as well. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> now, does she usually, uh, how does she do? She's I mean, is there competi- I guess, is there competition there? Do you have fun? Do you help each other? Or is it like, you know, the debates where, you know, I'm just waiting for a, a good case of, uh, you know, domestic violence to break out between those two at some <laughs> point. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that as well. <laughs> no, we, we're uh, pretty amicable. I mean, if she finds an amid one day and I don't, uh, you, know, you know what I mean? It's... Uh, there's a little bit of competition there, but she, you know she generally does pretty pretty good with what she's got. Well, and I, I'm not going to call you out here or anything, but in chat they're pretty much saying she kicks her butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheers for that, Aaron. <laughs> Evening to all the guys in the chat as well. Mm, but, you can always uh, yeah, count no, she, on your friends to be jerks, right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she, she she does well. I mean. She only goes around with the Garrett uh, Euro Ace at the moment, but uh, I think she would like to upgrade. Um, yeah, but no, she does well. She's she's found just as much as I have over the years. Oh, nice. Great. <clears throat> so, what machine are you using, John? I'm still using my E-Track. That's my preferred machine, go-to machine. Um oh, I'll be track, yeah. Yeah, I love the E-Track. You know, like I said before, it's if it doesn't broke, you know, keep using it. It picks up the, the small lamids and stuff like that, so why change I, it? I had one for a while, as you know, but um, I, I, I preferred, personally, the Xterra 705, which is still one of my favourite machines. The, the, the E-Track had too much going on for me. <laughs> Yeah, well, at the first six months, I just wanted Bandit over me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't uh, get on with it at all at first. It was a terrible machine at first. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you yeah, know, after about six months, I started getting used to it and playing with the settings. And, and basically, I haven't changed the settings. I use it on pasture, use it on stubble, beaches. If we go to the beach, I just don't change the settings and it works. That's fantastic. And obviously it does work because I've seen multiple videos on, on YouTube where you've had some fantastic finds too. 
yeah, I've done pretty well with it. Yeah, we've had a few gold coins. Me and Mandy. Mandy with her Euro Ace. So, yeah. I'm surprised that, that I, I don't know, the E-Track, I've got to say, was probably one of the easiest detectors I took to. I found it really simple, easier than the 705, and part of it is those tones. The tones are just beautiful on the E-Track, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. When I got my E-Track, they they just come out. Nobody had them. There wasn't any information on them, and in less than a week, I was just kicking butt with mine. I felt like I really understood it, and um, so I, I but, but, you know, most people, I am left-handed, and so I, I know I'm backwards, but I often hear people say, you know, oh, the E track was really hard to learn at first, or I didn't like it at first until I got used to it, you know, that kind of thing. And that's one of the easiest. But then sometimes there's other detectors like, oh, yeah, real easy detector to learn. And I think, no, I didn't learn that one real easy, you know. So maybe it's just mm-hmm. I'm backwards. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, once I got the hang of it, it was, I was pulling silver coins out left, right, and center, and, you know, artifacts all over the place with it. Once I, once I got. Because I, I run mine on full open screen, full tones, because I like to hear every single tone, top, middle, and bottom. You know, so that's just my preferred way of using it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, whatever works for you. But uh, the 705, I, it took me a little time to get used to, and I think it's because of that tone. I've, I've still got one. I've still got an old yeah. Well, it's actually a 70. Dave, I've got the seven. Which same thing, uh. same difference. I mean, going back to the comment Aaron's just said about the, the macro cruiser. Yeah, I, I like that machine. That's a good machine, but I prefer to use the e track on the pasture because you get deeper targets with it. So I've tried with the macro and had more success with the e track. So I think the macro is a lot better on well beaches and stubble, you know, ploughed land. Uh, but if you want the really deep artifacts, you won't go wrong with the ear track. Whatever works for you. That's what matters, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. That's what uh, two, two lads that I go out with, uh, they've both got uh, deuses now, obviously, for the ease of, of the weight and such like. But, but well, they both had the uh, the V5 Bliss tool, the Beast as well, and uh, both had fantastic finds with them. But both of them have still both got the e-track as well and the site that uh they've got in shropshire which they let me join in where we had the the um jet and hoard up some of the things that they've pulled out of there with the e-track were absolutely phenomenal and that was the reason i got the e-track uh when i got it but uh, as i say it just i just i think uh, as we've learned on the show over the last uh, year or so I'm a, a technophobe when it comes to machines, so the mm. easier the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I don't know, most detectors nowadays especially are pretty easy to learn. I, I mean, most of them have stock programs you can get started in and learn learn how a tone reacts, what kind of VDI, if it's a VDI detector. And, you know, then you go from there, but keep it simple starting out. I mean, that's, that would be my... Uh, recommendation recommendation to anybody starting out with a new detector you know start out simple don't be afraid but uh, you know don't be afraid to change the settings uh you know when i first got the amphibio i believe um i was struggling in two-tone i it's that's a that's a really chatty program and uh i went through all of them hunted for for a half an hour and felt it out and you know once I, I got the hang of it, I was off and running. I mean, that, that detector took me no time to understand. And then, then I really learned it well in three-tone is what I fell onto. And then now when I go out, I'll hunt in three-tone, and I'll change it back up and go into some of the other programs. Now that I've got a real good feel for it and understand the detector. Um, but, Dave, just keep it simple. Like, I know you got the rudest now. Keep it keep it so simple. You're oh, right. I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. He said, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally, we we started out with the Ace 250, and uh, with the, with a the, the Galate Ace 250, you basically just dig every target, because there's, there's no... there's no. Um, I think with an E-Track, you, you, you tend to be a bit more picky, if you know what I mean, 
Like with a Garrett, you just get a ding, ding, you dig it. You know, but with an e-track, it's telling you different things. So you, you think, oh, I'll leave that. But, you know, you get the same signal on, to, uh, on, on, a, on a Garrett and, and you dig it anyway. Mm, yeah, right. There's not so, really any settings on the Garrett, if you think about it, is there? <laughs> you know, that's, that's why it was good for me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Plug and play. Marvellous. So you've used the Garrett, you've used that. I take it you've also used the Macro Cruiser from one of the comments in the chat room. Yeah. And what did you think of that, he asks. Oh, well, no, I like the, uh, the Macro Cruiser is a good machine. It's really good. Uh, but like I say, I, I tend to go for the deeper targets and, you know, on the sites where I dig on, there's a lot of medieval stuff and it's deep, so I'd rather I, I go straight to the e trap before anything else. And once you get used to a detector, it's hard it's hard to switch up, isn't it? It, it, I think it is, yeah. It, it takes some time to get used to. It. When you have one that works good for you, it's really hard to. You know, I was telling you about my about Matt, my my co-host uh, on on the American show. It is so hard to get him to switch out from his CTX now, which he still has his. He's, matter of fact, he's got two e tracks, but it's so hard to get him to switch out, even when I can tell him from experience he'd be better off with this other detector that he has or this detector, and he just he knows it so well that yeah. he really uh, struggles to switch it out. Yeah, well, I've. I've... I know a lot of uh, detectives that have swapped the CTX and gone over to a Deus. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> it's, pro- it's probably the weight, to be honest. Of them. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of, of different tools for different jobs. And, uh, you know, I, I can't, Im- I don't know if I could pick one single, de- de- one single detector to do it all. I, uh, that's just my opinion, but I do learn detectors really, really well. I, I'm, uh, I can do that. I, I know detectors uh, very well and, and have no problem picking up something new, spending time with it, learning it. So, I, I mean, I don't think multiple detectors is for everybody unless they'll take the time to learn them and they understand how detectors work and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know... I think if, if you're not going to do that, if you're not real good at, at how the detector, how the settings affected the, affect the different detectors and stuff, I recommend sticking with one. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think you're better off. But uh, myself, I you know, it's just like you don't go build a house with a sledgehammer. You, you need a few more tools than that. Yeah. And that's kind of my, my outlook on it. Do you know the, uh, the first time I met, uh, John and Mandy, um, Mike, I actually organized a, uh, a rally for the mayor of Rochdale. Now, Rochdale's probably about 30, 40 miles uh, north, which I know isn't much to you in the big land of America, but to me, it's quite far. <laughs> um, and obviously, we introduced each other. I found out he lived not particularly far away, and we've uh, we've kept in communication ever since. So everything I actually, all the different events that I uh, organised at that point, Mandy and uh, John came to all of them and supported them. So obviously, thanks to that for both. But then there was also uh, John also organised a a rally locally for for uh, was it McMillan, John? Yeah, it was uh, Doug, Dougie Mack. Dougie Mack. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I was supposed to be going on the Saturday and doing a bit of marshalling. Unfortunately, uh, I went out the night before and I was in no fit state to get up in the morning so i wasn't able to make it uh, but that was a good rally wasn't it you had a, a lot of it a lot of people attend that yeah we had about 100 people turn up at that one we had um we raised over two two thousand four hundred quid on that for dougie mac mm-hmm. um yeah it was a, it was a good weekend like i say we did the saturday and the sunday we let, let them do a bit of digging on the saturday as well and sunday it was just like just went so smooth it was ridiculous <laughs> Are we? Are you thinking about doing that again at all? Anything in the future planned? Well, I, I've been talking with uh, Craig and Carl, you know, from the Four King Diggers. Yeah. And like doing a joint one somewhere, which it's getting 
right land, isn't it? And, yeah, it is. Uh, it is hard organising rallies. I mean, I understand how our club is and stuff like that. It's, it's hard work organising rallies. Well, you know, if you ever do, obviously, um, I, I live on your doorstep, basically. If you ever need, well, you'll, you'll, you'll need marshals, and I'm sure John Chandler will be there to help marshal as well. Yeah. Uh, he'll be a detectable marshalling, obviously. And anything we can do at the magazine to assist in promotion and such, like, you know, give us a shout and we'll do, obviously do that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, I used to go to school with John Chandler. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I've inadvertently known John via... Um, he popped up on Facebook, obviously, talking to me. I mean, mate from work went, how do you know John? I said, oh, metal detecting. He actually used to work at JCB where I work. Oh, right. And knows all the lads I work with, but left before I started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good lad, John, isn't he? He's, a good he's great. Lad. Yeah. We, he, he actually offered his son services for, for, to us this year. We were going to do uh, some French, uh, a French part of the magazine. Yeah, but because of time and what have you, we weren't able to do that. He was going to get his son to do the translation for us. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, he's got it. Has he got a sub kind of level in that or something? He's something quite high up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a good lad. Yes. Are you and uh, Mandy going to Rodney Cook and Detectable? Uh, we're going to Detectable. Brilliant. Uh, Mandy's not. Sorry, I am. Uh, Mandy's dumper. <laughs> oh, Mandy, yeah. Mandy's going to hit you with the spade when you get back then <laughs> yeah, I, I think she's been drinking around Manchester but we'll see <laughs> that's alright we'll all be drinking in a field in Oxfordshire <laughs> yeah, I, I want to uh... touch on that real quick I'm starting to notice a, a pattern we've been doing this for a year uh, Dave and I together and every time a rally comes up or something that he was at it you know bottom line is he ends up drunk and then we <laughs> On the other right. hand, we start talking about detectors, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm challenged, and, you, you know, I'm not real good with it yet and stuff. And I just have a little suggestion here, Dave. Maybe stop you, drinking. And maybe if you brought the drinking metal down <laughs> and the metal detecting up a little little notch, I, I, I feel like like the rallies and stuff for you are about the drinking, not the metal detector. No, no, the, the <laughs> Sean's event I missed because it was a pre-arranged work night out. Detectable last year, uh, I was kidnapped by my Polish friends and forced to drink homemade cherry Polish vodka at 7 o'clock in the morning. And when I say forced, I was actually in a headlock, and I was in a headlock. <laughs> well, we had drink at our Saturday night on that deck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had, had the... Um, the uh, the road was closed at talk at the time for the roundabout, so you couldn't get off the uh, the D road. I got a taxi home from Stoke, and we had to come all the way up the M6. So we actually passed him um, at, uh, what's the traffic light? It's called Auckland traffic light, so it wasn't that far away, to be honest. <laughs> Crazy. So, yeah, no, no, uh, well, 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 to be honest, Mike, uh, the Rodney Cook rally, there's a, a nice lady uh, who... Uh, I think Luke introduced me to who's actually uh, makes a lot of home brew uh, to to the point that she's looking at potentially furthering that and open up a small uh, microbrewery. And uh, we've been in communication talking this week over different things. And she's um, she said, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'll be bringing a keg with me, Dave." So uh, she's she's offered me some of her keg at Rodney Cook. So uh, watch this space <laughs> and a big long straw. <laughs> but you know like all joking aside um all these events mike in the uk i don't know what they're like uh, rallies in america i don't know if you do actually go to any of the big rallies in america but as i said last year it's absolutely fantastic when it comes to community uh, the community spirit in there, the people that you meet. You know, I've not seen John for a while. I'm sure to be lock up with John and have a chat, probably sit around the fire with a pint. Oh, uh, I've met other people that you don't see. So it's 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 nice to have a drink, to wind down and speak to people you've not seen for a long time and, and new people. I, I met a lad last year called Alex Savage. Um, and when we spoke... We spoke about different things, and Alex, is, he'd just come back from Pompeii where he'd been working as an archaeologist doing cleaning the finds and sorting the finds. And, you know, I've kept in contact with him, man, and what a lovely lad he is, uh, absolutely lovely lad. Uh, you know, people like that, 
you don't meet unless you go to these events. And obviously, as I say, a byproduct is that is, well, you can't not the fact that there's a, a big horse box that's been converted into a, a pub, can you? <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, fully looking forward to, to meeting up with everybody. And yeah, I, I will to I'll tell you what I will do, Mike. I'll tell you what I will do. Okay. I will go and see Tony Kaywood and the rest of Team Rutus, and I will have a major crash course in Rutusology. There you go. There you <laughs> go. This, year, this year after Detective All, I want to hear – more detecting, less drinking stories. I'm, I don't get me wrong. I love to drink and and socialize. I'm just saying. I think you need to concentrate on that a little bit more. That's all. I will. Who, 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 wants, to, uh, who wants to detect in a straight line anyway? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. I, I've got this de- detecting routine anyway. It's called the meander. I could end up anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I get that's that's okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying don't drink at all. I'm just saying maybe, maybe throw in a little little detecting there as well. I've said I'll go. I'll go on a crash course. I promise. I will go on a crash course. Mm-hmm. I will come back from uh, both Detectable and the uh, the Roger Cook Memorial Rally, and I will have a clue of how to use the routers. I guarantee that. I promise that. Um. Now, Don't ask me any questions about it, by the way. When you say crash course, are you calling it a crash course because you're going to get drunk and, <laughs> and you're going to crash? No, I've done, my, crash I've done my crashing last week. Mm, you goodness. Too so, John, yeah. you've probably had an abundance of, of metal detecting fines. Uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of different metal detecting fines. What would be some of your standout fines of your, of your own? Um, I don't know, because uh, mainly my my favourite stuff's medieval artefacts, stuff like that, or hammered coins. I love the love the hammered coins. I get a right buzz every time I find an hammered coin. Um, but I mean, we've had uh, Bronze Age axes. Mandy's had Bronze Age axes. Um, too numerous to to say really. <laughs> But I would say my favourite finds are medieval. I mean, I had a sword hanger the other day. I've got, I've got a bigger buzz off that sword hanger than what I would with a hammered. Do you know what I mean? Marvellous. Mm. Was that was that local? It was on a club dig at um, Shropshire. Right. Well, what is your club you're in, John? It's the Kings of Mercia. It's based, right, I'm with yeah, you. It's based down in Brood or Breewood. But yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's a cracking club. But been in that for quite a few years now. It's uh, they put some really good digs on. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things back from them. Yeah, they're a good team. A lot of them more they're more like friends rather than you know club members and stuff like that. Lot, you know, a lot of friends in it. it you know, like getting back to like the social part of it. You know, it's it's. You probably find yourself standing around in a field talking more than anything else. <laughs> Hold on, what's yeah, the uh, Is it next weekend or the fo- following weekend? Next next weekend, the what's the date is it today? Twenty ninth. Is it the seventh? Next Friday is the Rodney Cook, and the following week, I think it's the thirteenth. So it'll be the sixth, actually, not the seventh. Uh, the Friday, the thirteenth, which is a a bad day for me of all people to drive down to Oxfordshire is. Um, is detectable. <laughs> so not not this coming weekend, not the following weekend. Next, not 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 what day is not tomorrow. Next right. Friday is Rod- Rodney Cook. The following weekend is detectable. Okay. And by the way, can I just point out? Uh, Pete Sorrell's just mentioned it in the chat room, and it's obviously reminded me of something. Uh, you can download the detectable app. Uh, that's got all the information on there. Uh, so he was asking, Divi Detectorist was asking, uh, do you get a brochure or program? Uh, if you download the Detectable app, all information will be on there, plus chat rooms. And if you're sitting in your tent at night, most people who were actually uh, using it last year, I found, were actually uploading their images of of the finds. And um, 
if you can look back to last year, some fantastic things appeared on there. Really did. Mm. Oh, cool. Uh, Pete asked me what my excuse is, uh, if I got an excuse for not making 2020 yet. Um, no, I, guys, no kidding. We, our closest family is over a thousand miles away. We are in Texas with no family around. Um, you know, so it's hard for us to, to, you know, Steph can't just take off that much time, uh, where she was working up until about three months ago, I, I want to say, uh, that they shut down, closed their doors. She has a new job, but she doesn't have the leave now and stuff. We, when she has leave, we use it to see either my family or her family, which are in, you know, they're almost a thousand miles apart. You know, United States is big. So it's, it's going to be hard to get her to use vacation time to be home with the kids and not seeing family. So I'm working on it. Um, you know, I think, I think what, what might happen, what I'm hoping we can do this next year, um, is her go on vacation with the kids to see her family and me come over to detectable. But like right now, this year, I knew this year wouldn't be possible once, um, we were informed her, her job was coming to an end. Um, a, a massive store here that closed all their doors, uh, thousands upon thousands of people lost their job. And, uh, but now she's got a great job. Everything's great, but she doesn't have the leave built up yet so i'm hoping next year um that that that's how we do it i come over to do some detecting she takes vacation and goes and sees her family a few more things for chat room mike uh firstly tony k woods reminded us about the team rutus uk app uh download that and obviously that i'm sure will be updated during both the coming events Aaron Weedle from South Coast Detecting has said, don't forget the Santa app, as he did the voiceover for it. <laughs> Scott DeBay has, uh, he's actually given the information of the detectable app. It's actually a, an app called Attendify. Um, and you get that, obviously, through your Play Store or Google Store or whatever. And then when you launch that, find a detectable event via that and join. And finally, in this little bundle of, of information here, Mr. Terrell has said, are you ready? Mike, I will pay for your flight personally to get you over here for next year I've if you can that. find a way of making it. So uh, book your time off with Mrs. Mike and uh, get over here. And uh, while you, when you are over here, Mike, we can. you don't have to bring anything of either above it in your metal detector because we'll set up a speaker. We'll set up a speaker. We'll set up a, um, an all-metal mode booth within our... Uh, stand if we're there next year so you'll be all right then i'm sure well that booth is going to be empty because i'm going to be out talking to people and metal detecting so you're going to have to if i put a bunch of alcohol in there will you man the booth i i don't like to move from the booth but from the stall i don't like to move from the stall anyway because mm. there's so many people to talk to and there's so much information to give out and there's also, like last year, I was able to walk around and speak to people from, um, like Nathan from Black Aid that I'd never met Nathan before. I had a great bunch of chats with him. Julian Evan Hart, I met him personally. I had a great chat with him. So I, I stayed within the confines of the tent and stayed with the stall. So uh, basically, Luke got to go out and do that, which which suits me fine. I'm I'm, I'm happy to do that. So uh, don't you worry about that. No, I, I want to really bad. You guys have no idea. It, it's just a logistics thing, and this year was no good. Uh, once we knew she was losing her job, we, we you know, everything, uh, you know, even trips back to the family until we knew what, what that was going to, what that was going to take, you know, what that was going to do to us and uh, income and stuff. We, we kind of put everything off and... Uh, so we we are hoping here. Uh, well, I've got some uh, family matters in Ohio going on, so uh, we're we're not even. We were going to head back in the first or second week of October to go see my family. Uh, Steph is leaving next week to go visit her family for a few days, 
and then we were going to take some time and go to go see my family and because of some stuff going on we don't know that we'll be doing that but i will probably spend summer fall winter in ohio with family i've got a personal <coughs> health thing going on uh with a family member and uh so yeah it's fully, yeah, un- it's fully right. understandable fully understandable mm-hmm. but if you do you know you'll be well looked after and uh also the amount of people who who listen to the show in the uk i'm sure a lot of them would like to say i personally as well uh and, and i'm sure for yourself it'll be a pleasure to meet well it would be a pleasure to meet me more than anyone, really, wouldn't it? Absolutely. So, there you go. <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit concerned with that because I, you know, although I don't drink as much as I used to, I'm easily influenced. You know, I'm not somebody you're going to stick a drink in his hand and, and me say, oh, no, no, here, take it back. I'm not that guy, um, you know, and then I'm not real good at knowing when to stop. You know, that's <laughs> you, my You realize the yeah. The Anglo-American hug out between me and you will be quite a, quite a challenge as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With the beards. Yeah. You get your beards stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get him drunk and shave his off. That'll be dead amusing, that will. Or, or just like just put a few lines in it to make it look dead cool. Oh, I'm a man. It grows back quick. It's okay. <laughs> Aaron says he wants to whisper gently in Mike's ear. Aaron... Uh, what in the voice of Santa Claus? <laughs> I'm all for it, but I'm the type of guy I might throw you on my lap, and uh, especially you get me drinking. No, no, no. He, he's Santa. You'll be on his lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that works for me. <laughs> now, at Detective All and, and these other rallies, if you get so drunk that you end up naked, is that acceptable? Or... Uh, depending on where. And in what context, uh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, really. Okay. Well, good. We'll be good then. That has been known to happen. I, yeah, I'm not good with alcohol. I'll be the first one to admit. I, oh, I might get angry or mean. If you get, just if get, they get you on, if they get you on the Polish vodka, mate, you will, you will live to regret that. You I really mean, if really... I end up passed out in the field, is it going to be acceptable or am I, is, are people going to look down on me? How's that well, going to go? As Pete's guest. I'm, I'm sure everything will be fine, really. <laughs> Pete will allow yeah. it. It's already cool. It's I don't even have to ask Pete. Yeah, so we I'm have just going to get drunk and pass out in the field, make a big scene. I'll be half naked. It's okay, we Pete. Have, It'll be all right. We have football streaking. We have uh, cricket streaking. Detectable metal detecting streaking. That's not been done as far as I know. Yeah, Pete, uh, I'm sure, is already regretting his... Uh, him throwing out there that he'll he'll pay for a flight. I I would I would assume without a doubt. John, oh, tell us oh, the John three sixteen UK YouTube channel. How was that? How did that come to fruition? Um, it was just a bit of fun at the start. Really, we started going out with brother in law, um, Stephen at Go and Garrett. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Yeah, they started getting out together, and then the messages both started joining us, and uh, obviously he went his way and we went our way, and I just I thought, well, you know, at the time I, I was doing all the filming for Steve, and I think at the time he wanted, you know, get his own channel up and running as well, and his lad and stuff. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it just went from there really. It was just a bit of a laugh really. And you've got now around, well, nearly two and a half thousand subscribers. Yeah. It's getting there slowly. <laughs> well, I, I, I've been watching them for years, as you know. I mean, uh, yeah. when the when I, we utilized the, uh, the Archaeology and Metal Detective Magazine website in a different manner, obviously you gave me permission to utilize your, your videos on the site itself. Uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure, let me check, but I think what I've done now is when... No, no, I haven't. That's my own. I, I, the uh, when we upload one to our thing, it automatically goes onto the the website. So uh, I think we stopped actually doing that because we found well there was a, a one complaint in particular uh, from somebody who gave permission to say not to because uh, we were losing them uh, views. So uh, really? made the decision to to drop all of them. Yes, they were. They're having views via 
our website instead of direct to YouTube, oh, so it didn't right. go on on their figures, and they weren't best pleased with that because obviously it's uh, it's money at the end of the day, isn't it? Wow. So. Uh, so we, we decided to remove that, but obviously, as I say, John originally gave us permission to use his videos, as did Jackie Smith, uh, Digger Dawn, uh, multiple other people uh, allowed us to do that, uh, Andrew Jones as well. Uh, so, mm. yeah, we did that for a while, but obviously didn't get it. And you've had some, some fantastic exploits as well. I remember one, I thought, I know that place, and it was one of them fields, Mike, that I drive past all the time, uh, and it's next to the church where uh, my wife lived opposite growing up in the pub opposite. Her mum and dad had the pub for years. I thought, I know that field. And, yeah, it was that field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got quite a few permissions up around your area, around Bosley yeah. and that. <laughs> but uh, we've bled them dry now, so you can have them. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving home one day from Manchester. I've been to uh, to a dig in Manchester. I'm driving home, and uh, on the way back into Congleton on the, the Buxton Road from Bosley, mm. and I thought, "Where's that field? I'd love to go in that field." It was then metal detector. So I thought, "I'll pull over and have a chat, see how they are." It was John Challoner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So whenever it's been done that field, now I always let him know that the uh, the crops off. <laughs> yeah, I did the same as well for other people. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, like I say. I mean, the, the channel. What it's. I'm not all about the views. I don't get any money off it. I, I just do it for a bit of fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not trying break the internet with anything. It's just a bit of fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So great. But your videos are very good as well, John. Uh, you know, you you're editing. You. Um, you're coming in the vid, what's it called? The start of it, the video where it comes in, the way you have the same one every time. The, the credit, intro, yeah. the intro and the credits, absolutely fantastic. You can't knock them any way, shape, or form, and they're interesting. I mean, you've even gone the last couple of weeks. Uh, you, you built your koi pond in the back garden. You put your compilation on of that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my pond. It's kind of dragging me away from me detecting, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then obviously you were you were doing your uh, your live uh, YouTube live videos as well for a period. Yeah, well, I've I've kind of dropped off the off the scene a little bit because I've I've got you know I've got problems at home. With, with me old man had a, a stroke about four four and a half five months ago. He's still up at Hayward Hospital, so you know I've got you know. It's life, and it's, you know. It is. It is. We, it happens to all of us. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Pete Terrell says it's the best way to, to, to be, John. When you start chasing the views, that's when the fun starts to disappear. That's exactly right, yeah. If, you know, if I've seen people putting that much effort in, and I'm going to name Harry. He's put that much effort in. He burnt himself out at one point. Yeah. You he know, was doing, what, two or three videos a week, he yeah, wasn't? Yeah, yeah, that's just ridiculous. That's just That's just beyond... You know, so not only doing the detecting, where, to me, John, personally, I could make a metal detecting video. I get my phone dirty, and that does me head in for a start. Mm. But on top of that, I'm walking around, and because I'd have to go down and explain everything that's happening every time I'm doing it, everything I find, I'd have to video it. It, it as as Pete says, it takes the fun out of actually finding something, discovering it, digging it up, looking at it, getting the buzz out of it, because you know you've got to video it for for your videos. Yeah. I'm much yeah. more I'm, if you go onto the Archaeology Metal Detective magazine YouTube, which, you know, that's that's not for um not for people views. Basically I do that for information. Uh when I've been to archaeological sites, when I've been to digs, I talk about the archaeology. I I'm much more uh find it friendlier for me to discuss the history of places instead of sitting there with my phone over every hole I do because I like to walk around the field, feel the therapy of walking around the field or the beach, looking at the views, taking my earphones off for a bit, sitting by the river, listening to the the birds, having a drink, chilling out. Yeah, it's, it, it's just it's just a pain in the arse doing the rest, really. Yeah, I mean, last year it got on top of me a little bit. I was filming every single thing that was coming out of the ground, and and I'm not like people don't want to see buttons all the time and this and that. You know, they've seen it all before. So just generally now, anything that's interesting, I'll I'll film. You know, I'll film the amids and I'll film. You know, 
uh, any artifacts and stuff like that, really. Or, or Mandy falling over if she does. Well, <laughs> Mandy, I mean, I, I wish I'd got it on video. The funniest thing with Mandy was once was we were in a field over at Smallwood near where I, I did the charity dig. Yeah. And I'm going along and I dig uh, uh, the, the fins up off an incendiary bomb. So just jokingly, I says to Mandy, I said, be careful what you're digging now because the rest of it might be in the field or close by. Literally five minutes later, she says, yeah, what's this? I can't get out of the ground. She'd been hacking away at this incendiary bomb. <laughs> 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 Honestly. And I'm saying, and I'm like, you know, I expect to look across and just to see two smoking wallies in the field. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she's uh, literally the next signal she had was the, the other part of the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was funny. But, uh, yeah, I kept the fin. <laughs> guys can i can i change the subject real quick we can come back to it i just i looked something up and i i wanted to you know i think sometimes people are like don't quite understand what what the united states is like and um as far as travel and all that you know when i say how far my family is England is 50,301 square miles. I live in the state of Texas, which is 268,581 square miles. So to put that in terms, England would fit inside the state I live in five times. Um, So, you know, it's not always easy for the travel you know, our family, I don't know how many kilometers it is, but, you know, like I said, I, I want to say they're almost even something around uh, each one, somewhere around 11, 1200 miles from our family. So it's, you know, logistically, sometimes it's it's tough. Now, the next thing I want to say, and we don't have to talk about it, although I do need somebody to at least message me. Uh, on Facebook or something. I need to know what's going on. It's driving me crazy. Earlier in the week, I had two people, and I'm I'm going to say the name wrong on purpose, but the man in the ball cap, and they, they had messaged me and said, wow, have you seen his new thing he's doing? And it, it's real fancy. And then, the, the, matter of fact, one of them was the next day, it seems like there's a lot going on with him, and and I we don't need to talk about it. I, I'm I'm afraid it's it's not a good subject, but I would be really curious what's going on and what what happened there. Um, well, it's not something that I'm um, comfortable with talking on air, Mike. Uh, okay, so yeah. uh, somebody somebody, in fact, I'd like to sideswipe and get back to the other subject, and hopefully somebody will inbox you and let you know what's happened there. Good deal. Or I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. Whatever. Somebody send me a Facebook message or something by tomorrow. I'd appreciate it. So, how many videos have you got up on YouTube channel about now, John? Um, I soon tell you. 260 plus videos. So, there you go, Mike. You got something new to watch there? Mike? No, I'm here. I'm listening. I you got I, you got you got something to uh, watch there. Uh, but uh, I, you know what? I just don't. I don't get around to it. By the time I deal with kids all week and homeschooling monkey and uh, taking care of everything, I I rarely do I get to watch videos. Not many. I know you do. You do. I know you do sometimes when you're looking at. Uh, guests we've had on the show or whatever. Yes, and I know you yes, pop on I semi do. regularly and, and watch a few. So, mm-hmm. honestly. Have a look at some of John's. Uh, In fact, I'm looking through John, and I can't believe that some of the videos you've got on there, which I've seen and really are good videos, I've got so few hits. It's it's mad. Really is mad. Yet some channels that are absolute shite (laughs) with a very, very poor people involved in it, I've got 30,000 subscribers and multiple hits on the videos yeah uh, <laughs> i don't know I, I think a lot of it's down to uh, people's 
you know, when the, their attitudes and things like that, when they, how they come across and stuff like that. I mean, I just we just keep it real. We just have a laugh and we dig a, we dig his junk up and and his goodies, and that's what I put up. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not a showman. It's it's just basic metal detecting, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> So and you can't that, you knock know. it. You can't knock it at all. No, it's. Um... Now you've also got a Facebook group, Coins, yeah. Relics, and Fun. Yeah. Uh, I think that must be about two, three years old now. Yeah. Originally, Brandon made that. <laughs> oh right, that's your, your son. Uh, my lad, uh, he, he made it originally, like, and then he just handed it over to me to carry on with that. <laughs> there you go, Dad. <laughs> see ya. Yeah, started that for you. There you go. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's been up and running for about, yeah, about four years, I reckon, now. Yeah, I've uh, obviously used that as well. And, again, John's always allowed me to uh, to share information from the magazine on there as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. No problem with that. One more well, time, what's, what's your YouTube channel? The John 316 UK. Uh, I left the, out the UK. The, the John. You got that, yeah. That's where I'm. Up. Okay, quite, I am currently like, subscribed, so yeah, I will definitely get around checking these out. Coins, relics, and fun is the Facebook group, Mike. Uh, I've got. I'm, I'm. Do you know? I must have been invited to about four metal detecting related Facebook groups this past week alone. Half of them I've never been on, and I was sharing uh, one of our post the other day uh, I can't remember which one it was and Facebook now gives you the option instead of going share find the name of the group share find the name of the group you press share on my phone now and you can just click everything you want to share and I didn't realize how many groups I was on <laughs> and, I, and I really need to go on there and remove some of them because I've never I don't, I don't even know what some of them are uh, <laughs> really don't so uh obviously there's there's occasion where i forgot to put stuff on john's group because i'm typing them in trying to remember what groups to put them in but now it's got this option at least i've, I've john's uh group again and i've been able to, to put things on again so again thank you for that you're always welcome mate anytime marvelous hmm. did that so, come through to you guys okay, which what no, comes i think we're good what? Nothing. Never mind. Never mind. We're good. <laughs> I, I got uh, on YouTube. I was looking up uh, uh, your videos, and then I was looking through them, and then one started playing. Uh, so it. it uh, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm done. So what are you out to the boat next, John? Um. Well, I think we're giving it a break this weekend because. It, Save a bit of money up for the detectable, but I don't yeah. know. I think me and Col, but I've got a new, some new land up at uh, Breaton Way. All right, yeah. Um, that needs going over, so we might go up there on Sunday. Um, but after that, it's detectable all the way. I'm a detectable virgin, by the way. I've never been before. I was last year, John. Yeah. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons I made a bed in my car. <laughs> I've heard once you go to Detectable, you're no longer a virgin, though. It sounds like it gets pretty wild, um, like locks on your tents and stay away from Dave after so much, so many drinks. Uh, myself and Luke, last, myself and Luke last year. You know, obviously Kev Marchese, uh, he, he was a Detectable, and uh, me and Luke staggered back to our uh, tents, and we weren't far from Kev. So uh, Kev was fast asleep with his uh, One Direction duvet on, and we uh, we broke in and accosted him somewhat. <laughs> accosted him somewhat. I I don't know if you break that sentence down, it it doesn't sound so fun. <laughs> I've got to lock as nice as I could. Yes, you definitely going to need to lock his up. To be honest, um, Mike uh, John's a bit of a. Uh, looks like he used to do the weights somewhat in his youth, so I, I won't be getting in his tent. <laughs> I think that was down to my job. I've always been a commercial, um, well, 30 odd years in the commercial tyres. So oh, picking wow. them up. Yeah. And, he, and he also, he's also nice enough to sometimes um, 
let me give the people a nod that uh, are under him in a certain British um, chain <laughs> of companies, and I sometimes get money knocked off for knowing John as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Notice how I've done that as well without mentioning anything as well, John. No, no. Um, did you have any tyres on your car when you had a crash? Uh, what, what do you mean? <laughs> the crash you had last week. Yeah, I don't, I, obviously I had tyres on it. Uh, where did I have tread that? on? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely had tread on. Where did I have that? Oh, they were from one of your um, competitors via uh, tyreshopper.co.uk. Uh, that's why, then. That'll be <laughs> <laughs> I've, not been to, I've not been to see the lads for a while I like to give them abuse, keep them on the toes Yeah, go see Matt <laughs> uh, I'm off I'm off here looking at um, I'm waiting I'm waiting for somebody to message me on Facebook I, I, I need to know what's going on here I, you know, not being there I think I'm more in the loop than most Americans doing the podcast on what's going on over in the UK metal detecting but I'm still an American, you know, and I'm still a long ways away. So sometimes I, I am kept in the dark. Some, I, I guess I should ask you pre-show, Dave. Uh, I could have sent you some links, links and what have you, no doubt. So, uh, but it, it's <clears throat> you. You can get a few hints and tips from people's comments in the chat room. Um, but there's a certain UK um, retail, uh, metal detecting retailer that have announced that they're not going to have anything to do with said person anymore uh, because of things that have occurred over the past week uh, on social media. Uh, it's and wait to see. Uh, it's uh, uh, somebody being a bit daft with their views and their views are their views alone and uh, we may not uh, agree with their rules but uh, sorry their rules their views uh but obviously everyone can have them but there's been a bit of a backlash to said views and the person has continued anyway to con- with the views just i don't know if he want he's trying to wind people up or what not uh unfortunately it has because of other things that have occurred in the UK in the in the past week or so. So mm-hmm. anyway, I'm getting away. I'm getting away from now because yeah, I yeah, said that well, I don't go. go there at all tonight. So yeah. go on, ask John some things. Uh, John, I would like to know. I I think I'm sure the E track is still crazy popular over there. What's your settings? What's your why? What's your success with the E track and and settings? Basically, like like I said, it's. I just set it on full open screen and full tones, and off you go. The only thing I ever adjust on it is the um, sensitivity on it. Uh, you know, it, I do have problems with some power lines now and again, but knock it down a couple of couple of notches and it's all right. But basically, I just full screen, full tones, and just. Uh, are you, know, you in that, what? What are you in? Uh, fair? Are you in Ferris? mode or the bears tones? Uh, no the uh the other one i forgot what it's called conductive tones conductive that's it yeah conductive so so your little hammer coins come up with a, a you know a low grunt um your copper pennies and things like that come up come up with a high tone uh but so does your iron as well but you know once you know your machine, you, you can give you know have a glance at your numbers. You don't have to, but you glance at your numbers. Thirties, thirties and plus is usually iron. But you know, I do do it a dig of iron every now and again just to make sure I'm you know still getting the right tones and stuff. But yeah, just uh, everything fully open, full screen, everything. Have you tried two tone Ferris? I think I tried that when I first had the machine. Um, but I was talking to a friend of mine, and he, he talked me through it. This was when I was struggling with the machine at first, and he, he was talking me through it. And, and he says, usually, he say, I, I think it's not, uh, Nigel Jones's program that he's actually got a video up on YouTube. Um, 
and I've just like tweaked them a little bit here and there, but uh, that's, that's how it works for me. Okay. Yeah, I would highly suggest trying that two tone. Uh, my personal opinion, that's one of the best settings. I, I tweaked it a little bit different than how most did. I, it's been so many years since I've actually used an e track, but, uh, um, Man, is that killer in the iron? Uh, if you're in the if you're in iron, I can promise you it's going to work better. If you can take yeah. the time, get used to it, it, it really will. If you're in heavy iron, it it's the program to be in. And I've, I mean, I used to know that detector inside and out. If I had one sitting here in front of me, uh, I could I could set it up. I can't from memory anymore tell you how how to navigate it. But mm-hmm. I could, you know, if I had one in my hands, I, I could do it pretty simple. But uh, I, you know, I don't know if you hunt in places with much iron, but that two-tone Ferris, a uh, couple little modifications is a really, really amazing program for that. Yeah, ge- generally, there's not a lot of iron. And, uh, unless you're on a big Roman site, there's iron everywhere. It's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's one of the things. But, um Generally, where, where we go, there's not a great deal of iron, and I, I, I seem I tend to find I get a lot more depth with the the program I do use as well, especially on this on the small items like the amides and stuff like. That. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I uh I I was very successful with the track. It's it is a great detector. I uh, I just like I said I I just writ, wrote an article that it's to me those are still the best silver coin detectors there are still even with everything new on the market uh it's really i mean yeah it's hard to beat uh an e-track for that yeah you know, it, it lets you know if it's silver don't it <laughs> yes it will it definitely it, stick, yeah it definitely stick, sticks out to any other signals you got I've never found so much silver that was masked by iron and everything else. Uh, most detectors, even the new ones, can't get through the iron and masked. Uh, you know, that's where it really excels is on the masked coins, the masked, sil- masked silver. It really, uh, mm. uh, really shines there, in my opinion. I just picked up an Explorer, which is the same the same thing for the most part. Uh, the only thing you, you don't have two tone Ferris and, uh, but as far as a coin detector, it's in my, in my opinion, it's right there with an e track, um, for deep silver. So I'm really excited to get back to using it. Uh, mm-hmm. did, some, did some trading and, and got me one. I, it's been a number of years since I've had an Explorer and e track, but, uh, excited to get back to it. They're great. Yeah, yeah. Just absolutely fantastic detectors. Plus, plus you don't dig the hot rocks and the the coke, as we call right. it over here. Uh, and I, I believe the Equinox 800 is very similar to the E-Track as well. Um, one of the guys in our club's got one of them. He says, oh, I'll borrow it to you. I said, well, what, why borrow it to me? It's pretty much the same machine. I know it's got newer, newer technology in it, but... You know, I'd still go to the e trap before that. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it's really because, you know, the e track came out, what, roughly 10 years ago, I would say, just off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, it, I think it's it's become overlooked. And, you know, even even the, the newest, latest and greatest detectors, I have yet. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some great new detectors out. And in some ways much better detectors uh you know one of the things about the e-track explorer series they are heavy detectors um they will take take a toll on you after a while and uh oh, gotcha. they're not perfect but they're about as close as you're going to get to uh you know to me it's they they are still probably the best detectors on deep silver uh, they're yeah. not perfect. There's a, there's other things I don't like about them. There's things about newer detectors I prefer, um, but they are just incredible. I was telling telling somebody the other day when I had an e track, 
were an explorer. There, there wasn't a year. And keep in mind, I, I that wasn't my goal. Mostly, what I do when the when the crops are out, I'm in the fields. Um, mm-hmm. And you don't where I'm from, you don't find nearly as many silver in fields. They eh? they just didn't lose a large sense. We find earlier relics and coins. Large scents are real common, but rarely will you find silver. I could go spend just the summer, and and it was nothing to go find 100-plus silver coins at parks and schools and stuff like that when the fields were planted. And I've never I've never um, matched that with any, any other detector. I've never even come close. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even you put, you put the same amount of time in there, just they are extremely ordinary on silver coins oh yeah uh, we, we've got a field up in up, up near where dave lives and um, we nicked we nicknamed it the the precious metal field now i went over that field the the garris ace 250 and the euro ace which we had after and we had loads and loads of coins coppers silvers you name it and and it felt like the field had been done and that was it and when i got the e-track I went over it again, and it was like a new field. It was it was pulling up deep silver all over the place again. Yeah, I think I, I even had my first gold coin off there with the U track. Wow, yeah, <laughs> they are good. I, I think you know for anybody who's looking for deep silver, uh, it's still absolutely a relevant detector. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and it's not talked about much anymore. The E-Tracks and, you know, the, those FBS detectors, the CTX still is. Yeah. But honestly, um, I would take the E-Track, even an Explorer, over the CTX. They they ID better, in yeah. my opinion. Uh, you get a lot of really neat bells and whistles, and you get a better balanced detector. But you're really, mm-hmm. performance-wise, you're not getting, you're, in my opinion, and I've got a lot of hours on the CTX as well, it's not quite as good at, at identifying those those targets. No. it's. Uh, I think what he says, it's because it looks like an outdated machine now. It looks big. It looks clunky. It's got some weight to it. But, you know, it still does the job. <laughs> it does. It do, And it does it really good. Um, yeah. Yeah does it very good i agree you know i've been thinking while you've been talking Uh we should have a show a metal detecting war show where we get individuals the likes of tony kaywood representing Rutus, someone representing mind lab someone representing garrett etc etc and we talk until somebody myself or yourself or the listeners decide which is the best machine because everybody's got their own individual favorites. You can't actually, th- that can't be done because we all have our own styles. We all have our own likes. Y- you know, there's a, a detector. I know, I know what I'm saying, though, is imagine the conversation. Imagine the arguments. It'd be brilliant. Yeah, but we don't <laughs> want people mad at each other and stuff. Uh, we don't need the drama. Oh, be mad. I, I think we could have a, a show where we nicely debate the different detectors. I could see that, but I think when you put war in there, uh, you're starting <laughs> off on a bad foot. Because, I mean, those arguments can get heated really quick. I, I mean, here's my thing. I, I told you guys, I don't I don't believe in one tool to do, to do all, everything. I mean, I, I think every manufacturer, or your, ma- your major ones, not these knockoffs, uh, you know, built in third world world countries and stuff but uh your major manufacturers all make a good detector and and it depends on what you like what you what suits you um you know every one of a mine lab mine lab makes some great detectors even whites whites has kind of fallen back um i feel like with um with their technology but i have heard amazing things about the mx sport the MXT All Pro is, you know, which is just the old MXT with an up. I believe the coil was changed. That is a fantastic detector. Fisher, Whites, Technetics, uh, Nocta Macro, Rudis, of course, um, you know, XP. They all, it, it's what suits you. You know, for example, the XP is a very, very popular detector, right? The, the Deus. I personally, 
I don't, and I, I've never used one for an extended period of time. I'm not a fan of the tones. Um, there's some things I'm not a fan of, but could I knock it? Absolutely not. People are very successful with that detector, and it's proven itself time and time again, but it just doesn't float my boat. Um, you know, we all have our differences and things, and but they all make good, great detectors. I mean, they do. Um, it's what suits you, what suits you. And uh, I would love to have a show if we could keep it friendly. Um, I'd love. Do you know, to I've, I've actually, I'd like to, I'd like to actually progress the idea and offer it over to Pete Terrell. And on the stage at Detectable, maybe next year, so you've obviously got time to do it. Have a panel, a panel with different uh, companies on the panel, and the audience could ask some questions and they can discuss all the benefits of individual machines in front of the audience. How's that, Pete? If he's still listening, I don't know, he might have gone bad by now. Oh, yeah, no, he's still there. He's still, still there. there. Uh, the other thing, sorry, I also, we had a question off uh, Mike Amanda Fuson. How do permissions work in the UK? Has there been any, diff- any difference since all the hordes have been found? Is it harder to obtain a permission? What's the average acres someone can get? Well, I'm sure John will agree with me and most of the other people agree with me that the hobby has grew exponentially in re- recent years. For me personally, the boom this time around has come from the Detectorist, the TV program. Uh, obviously, the more people who are involved in the subject, uh, the more people that are to go to farmers, the more people trying to get land. So it is quite concentrated at the moment. Uh, it comes in peaks and troughs, so there might be a trough in the future where that won't happen, but you'll also find multiple up groups, um, clubs who do do digs that you can actually participate on. I think the hordes have been basically uh, the the land that's available and also the machines now are better than ever. Uh, plus, obviously, the con- con- concentrated amount of people who are actually involved in it. Um, th- that's what I would personally say. Average acreage? You'd look in at anything between some sites have 10 acres, 40 acres. I've heard 250. I've heard 1,500 acres. Uh, depends on who, who you're talking to and how big their fish is, to be honest. Is that about right, John? Uh, yeah, I think there's going to be another boom as well. Now, you know, Adam and Lisa's find as well. Mm-hmm. That'll be another thing because it's all over the news. It was all over the radio yesterday. So th- there'll be a you know, a lot of detectors bought again in the next few weeks, you know, but that, that's, yeah, that you, you're right. I mean, like you say, the detectorist program and um, you, you got your leak frith ord and you got your Staffordshire ord and all them lot. Like it's, you see a boom just after that, don't you? You do. But which is good, like which is good for one, Pete. <laughs> yeah. The next one will be over Adam and Lisa's and, you know, it, it the figures like three, four, five million pounds for for coins. You know, it's it's going to it's just going to spiral, isn't it? It is. Well, and again, in our area where we live, I live in in uh, South Cheshire and uh, sorry, Cheshire East, and John lives in the Stoke area in Staffordshire. I'm sure John will will agree with me that since the leak thrift Torcord was found, everybody in there. Detecting buddy came to the Staffordshire and South Cheshire area and tried to get as much land as they can. So yeah. there's lots, and lots, lots that we can't get access to that's on our doorstep because people are travelling all the way from, well, in some cases North Manchester, in other cases over from Leeds, all sorts. Mm. Yeah, I find it odd. I find it odd now getting permissions and stuff like that. I managed to get one recently. Uh, the landowner was more than happy for us to go on. He said, "I'd love to know what's on my land, you know." But yeah. you, you go next door, and he's like, "No, don't, don't, you know, I don't do that sort of thing." Yeah. You know, I've been very lucky recently, John. I got a, a new uh, permission myself a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and it's 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 more or less people you know. The lady yeah. who uh, owns the sheep farm, her and her husband, her daughter is in my son's class at school, and the mums all have semi regular meetups and what have you. And when, when my wife found out that she owned a farm, she straight away said, Camille's become a metal detective. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So yeah. uh, friends are friends at the moment, I think. 
Yeah, that's what happened with me. I mean, through my job, uh, a lot of these oldies firms did a lot of, you know, pulling their straw and stuff like that from different forms, and, you know, they put me onto them. That was at the start, more or less. It's a bit quieter now. <laughs> Dave, I, I'm oh. sorry. I wanted to jump in and say something. You you said that uh, I've really been struggling with this lately. Um, it's kind of been been on my mind. There's been some questions asked and stuff. You said that uh, the technology is getting better, and in some ways, I think it is. But is are we getting deeper? Are we getting are they really getting better? And let me give you an example, you know, and, and I think this is relevant, um, you know, since we have John on who uses a mind lab. Okay. Take the Explorer XS. The Explorer XS, if I recall, came out in 1999. If I, if I remember correctly, it was 1999. So there, you're talking uh, 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I that was my favorite explorer if you're talking about silver coins finding silver coins we're not talking about relic hunting per se I would put that detector up against anything that's out there today for sil for silver coins um, I, I don't think you'll find anything that'll find it find deeper coins on a regular basis um, I don't think you're going to find anything. Yeah, they're slow. You got to swing them slow, but you're not going to find anything that's going to unmask deep silver any better. So I kind of struggle with that. I mean, there's some really good old detectors, you know, and then we go into technology, you know, by, by most people's standards, analog detectors are outdated. They're, they're old technology. There are detectors that, analog detectors that in certain situations I think rule all day long over the the brand new digital detectors and it's I'm in no way am I putting down new detectors uh what, what I'm saying Mike is it, it, the likes of the route is alter 71 it's got 71 different frequencies you've got so much scope to be able to do different things if you're able to understand what you're doing also last year at detectable um Noctum Macro released the, or they showed the machine that they've got, which you've got the, the big uh, console on your chest as well as the, let's call it a metal detector for argument's sake, which actually shows you what you've got under underground in a 3D imagery. That's not been done before. So I'm talking the likes of the Root Assault 71 with its 71 different frequencies, the likes of... The 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 not but, but is that really machine. helping you? Is that really helping you find deeper targets? I mean, I Person, was still personally. I can't comment. You know, I can't comment. Right, and and Tony, Tony can comment. Tony can comment if he's got more finds. And, and I'd like him not to be biased because I know his team root is UK. I'd like him not to be biased. Has he found more significant artifacts, coins, find, etc.? With the Ruta Salter 71, with its 71 different frequencies, than he found with his, his previous machine. I'm waiting for him to answer if he's listened. <laughs> okay, well, let me, while, while we're waiting on that, let, let me touch on a few things. I, I, I need people to understand, in no way am I putting down the new detectors. And, and I will go as far, okay, you know, you know I love the Amphibio. Um, it's a brilliant detector. I, I'm a big fan of Nocta Macro. But the Ruta 71 is the closest thing I have found to the, the FBS detectors at identifying coins. Um, it's brilliant at that, but you can also relic hunt with it and stuff. Uh, you know, my Amphibio, where it really excels for me is in fields with iron. You've got the iron audio it will go deep. It's a deep detector. I mean, they, they, I'm not knocking those detectors. What I'm saying is, in my opinion, although we have seen some new great features and there's some stuff, but I, I don't see this huge thing. I, I want to say this. John O'Reilly said 
the, the machines are getting more sensitive even with larger coils. Also, larger coils coming as standard. So arguably better depth for some targets. I somewhat agree with you, John, but here's where I disagree. The Explorer XS came with a st stock with either a 10-inch or 11-inch coil. That's still pretty much the standard coil size. Uh, are these new detectors uh, more sensitive? Yes, but does that always help you? No. Let me give you a great example. Um, you know, I've got a site here in Texas. It, it's for Texas. It's pretty old. It goes back uh, about 120 years. I can go in there on a higher frequency, and that detector will drive you mad. Any any high any any detector running a higher frequency. I'm not singling out any one detector. Um, but you run that thing at 14, 19, and there's, I mean, I've pulled BBs out at four inches. Well, so what am I, what am I really getting out of a site like that where there's so much trash layer upon layer of it and there's tiny trash, there's little pieces of, of aluminum and stuff like that. What it's, you know, at five kilohertz, I'm still going to hit a deep silver coin. And, and at that site, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I want to do. Um, you know, what I'm getting at, those higher frequencies in some situations are a hinder. They're not they're not helping you. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm not I, I we're really getting off the subject, I guess. Uh, maybe this this is uh, not a great conversation. And I sure wouldn't want anybody to think. I love the new technology. I'm excited when new technology comes out, and I do see improvements. I, I what I'm saying is, I, I think overall, I I'm not seeing huge performance uh, increases. I mean, I can still take detectors that are 10, 15, 20 years old, and and a, and in most cases accomplish the the, the same thing that I that I can do with these brand new detectors. I think where the new detectors excel is I can usually do it easier or better with the, or, you know, easier. Um, you know what I, what I mean by that is I can take an E-track, I can put it in two tone Ferris and I can go hunt a field site that's littered in iron and I can pull out some really good coins and relics. But I've got to listen to all that iron. And now with the Amphibio, with the Rudis, with Iron Audio, I can accomplish the same thing. I can I can pull all that good stuff out, but now I don't have to hear the Iron Audio screaming in my ear. Um, you know, so there's some improvements for sure. You know, we're, we're getting into wireless. Uh, almost everything's coming out wireless now. I mean, my goodness, Nocta Macros announced the... Uh, the simplex, you know, we're talking an entry level detector now with wireless headphones. How how amazing is that? Um, so there there's been some advancements, but it sometimes I wonder, you know, have we really gotten that advanced? I, I mean, I I can look back on detectors made in the last twenty years, and in my honest opinion, the best out of those made twenty years ago, I can accomplish the same things. I think what we're seeing is we're seeing more versatile machines uh, where I might need two or three of those old detectors um, to accomplish what an Amphibio will do or the Rudis. Uh, you know, th those, those I'll be honest with you, those are my two favorite machines and um, right now of, of the latest and greatest. But I, I look back at what I've used in the last 20 years, and, and although... I'm very happy with what has come out and what I'm seeing and, and some of the new features. Outright performance, I, I think most detector, you know, the, at least the best ones that were made 20 years ago are still even relevant and can do all, if not, or are much, as much as, or if not, as, oh, oh boy, I messed that up. Th they can work as good or, or, almost as good or as good as some of the most relevant detectors. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. I'm sorry. I sent it down. <laughs> you you know, that's really been on my mind because with, with my circles I run in, 
that's really been a question here lately and some conversations have come up with that. So I apologize. We're having, we're having a quite delightful conversation in the chat room as well tonight. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, we're actually having a conversation. Normally it's just, you know, you have a little chat here and there, but we've actually got a a decent conversation going on about the benefits of, uh, well, everything that you've just been talking about, really. And and uh, people like me and uh, Divi Detector is being technophobes. <laughs> it happens. It happens. And, and yeah. Stephen Pettikin saying he, he they don't have technology. Play with rocks in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, Mike, that's that's one of them jokes that you probably wouldn't get. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny yeah. though to think uh, we don't have we don't have time. we play with rocks. I mean, it's funny in itself. But fill me in. Tell me what what the. Uh, Wales is the land of green pastures and lots of places which have probably only had electricity piped along to them in the last 10 years. That's obviously <laughs> carrying on. I'd say elaborating a little bit too much, perhaps, but uh, it's, uh, uh, to be fair, I, I, I absolutely love Wales. I'll be retiring to Anglesey one day. I love it. Absolutely oh, nice. love the place. We play Beautiful with country. In Wales. That's fun. <laughs> So, have we got anything else to uh, to add, Mike? Any more questions for John? I'm all good, unless you want me to glaze everybody's eyes over and start talking technical. I could break it down to different detectors and compare them. And you want to do that? If you want to do that, no, I'll I'm go. Kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I think most everybody in the chat's like, "Oh goodness, Mike's on it again." Here you know what happens when you do a technical show? You know, there's a high percentage that I actually fall asleep. It's only happened once, mm -hmm. and that was on a technical show. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Hmm. Well, I think the more you know technical, the the better detectors you you got the you know you got the c c c c ah, capability. capability of becoming a better capability. detectorist when you learn different detectors and how they work in different situations. And you know, if you can go to your toolbox and you've got okay, this is the field I'm going to today. This one will be suited best for it, and you know why it will, and you know how to how to change it and, and modify the programs and settings to for that, that field that you want to, you know, then, then you're ahead of the game. Uh, uh, Divi Detector says, question, do modern detectors ID targets by shape or the metal they are? Um. Well, kind of both, because when you go over that, you know, if you if you go over a, a large chunk of iron, let's say, or a big aluminum can, and it goes, whoop, whoop. Well, it's not on shape, okay? Yeah, no, it's not on shape, but you can tell oftentimes the size by how that, you know, if you go over a deep coin, it's whoop, 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 you know, and you go over a pop can, whoop, 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 you know, listen for that. So, but yeah, it's definitely on, on conductivity. It's not on size. Although some have claimed they can tell size like the Garrett 2500. Um, so, but for the most part, yeah, conductivity. Them, them noises that you were making a minute ago, Mike. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, that's right. going to be it. That's going to be me at the end of the night at Detectable. <laughs> Tony <laughs> said they ID them by magic. I Magical. Yeah. I, I really, I, I don't know, you know, when you start talking signals and frequencies, I mean, I, I get the frequencies and how they affect different size targets or different uh, conductivity targets. I I can't get into the different kinds of signals and how, you know, you know I don't get into the that technical side. I can talk detectors from all of my use of detectors. I, you know, that's where my technical side is. But maybe what we can do, maybe you guys would be interested. Keith Wills that I had, that I went and visited last week, that guy has been repairing metal detectors as a business since 1983. Um, that guy can answer anything and everything technical. I can't tell you technical on detector how it works, I can tell you my experiences from running such detector or similar detectors, uh, but 
if you guys want, I'm sure I could get him to take an afternoon off sometime and get him on, and we could he could sit here and answer questions for hours uh, upon hours on uh, technical stuff. So think about that. Let us know if you want us to do something like that. Of course, I would love to find somebody in the UK who can do that, but. Uh, from my understanding, there's nobody that repairs them any, anymore but the manufacturers. I mean, Keith Wills is the last one here in the United States that does that. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody else here in the, in the United States repairs them other, other than the manufacturers. And then a few of the manufacturers have taught people how to change boards and stuff like that. You know, there's a couple uh, um, that do that for a specific I'm, manufacturer. I'm not we... 100%, 100% right in me thinking, but Kev Blackwell from Staffordshire Metal Detectors, I'm pretty sure he does some repairs. I'm pretty sure. Not 100%. Yeah, he uh, does. He's based on your toxic to. That's the one, yeah, in, in yeah, straps. Does, up, yeah. yeah, That's what. That's what actually the guy we bought his first Gareth off this, <laughs> when we first kicked in again. Yeah. <laughs> now... Yeah, he, he's a fan. That you have a look on the Staffordshire um, metal detecting website. He has uh, a lot of good, cheap machines on there, and I, and I mean cheap as in uh, obviously he's, he's yeah affordable. Uh, and he also he, he's got a business where he uh, produces covers for your machines. Uh, you know, like you you say your your e track for instance. Uh, you know you control box cover and what have you um they, they've got their own company that create them that make them so again a, a different type of price and then neoprene as well if i remember correctly uh i've worked with him uh worked through him a few times uh, done some work for him there so there you go oh uh pent technic is a fixer of all things since way back he's a tesoro specialist says pete there you go uh there you go. Divi Detector says to John, what is your favourite, most precious metal find? Not Has to be the Bronze Age Ajax. Said, did you say Has that Has to right? be the Bronze Age Ajax. Yeah, the Bronze Age Ajax, uh, it was an early one as well. It was uh, three and a half thousand years old. It was only a, a flat a flat axe. Uh, that was from Rudyard. That's interesting. I'm, I'm I'm actually trying to put together a database of things like that that are found in the Rudyard area. Uh, I've been privy to three that have been found, and, and obviously now there's four. Mm. But uh, the Mac 2 uh, Leak Road is contaminated with uh, burial mounds and such like, so it's a good yeah. area. Yeah, it is. Area indeed. Anyway, Mike... Are we? Have we any more questions at all? I sure. I think it's a good time to wrap it up. Absolutely, let's do it. Um, I've I've got one uh, apology to make uh, for people who were looking for the Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine. Uh, we had an issue for a while, and we thought it was fixed, but unfortunately, it's not. Uh, the, we we utilise GoDaddy for the website, and they fixed everything with the site. Everything's running fine. But if you Google anything uh, and it says the Archaeology Metal Detecting Magazine and you click on the link on Google, it comes up as a firewall. So we don't know why. So I'll be on the phone from this weekend to fix that because obviously people will see Archaeology Metal Detecting Magazine, may remember, Google it instead of going direct to the website www.archmdmag.com instead. So if you do want to go to the website, please utilize the website um, address as opposed to Googling it. Um, there was something else as well, but my mind's gone blank. Oh yeah, next week's show. Unfortunately, uh, Mike won't be available. So, if you do want to listen next week, please uh, go over to the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine on Spreaker. I'll send links out in the the usual places on um, social media, and um, I'm hoping to do a Rodney Cook and. Um, detectable special uh, so obviously give out again more details for Rodney Cook because we've done that this week obviously we'll be a little bit less and talk about detectable a little bit more 
Uh, I'll be producing again, unfortunately, because Lee, Luke will be at uh, the Rodney Cup Memorial next Thursday night. He's helping set out and do some work down there. Uh, so I'm hoping to uh, sort out somebody to come on and chat with me. If Mr. Terrell, if you are available, uh, it would be very nice if you could come on and talk some detectable what's going on. Because I'm sure people would rather hear it from one of the organisers as opposed to one of the fat people who are going to be there. Did you just say fat people? Yep, that's me. Okay, okay, just making sure, <laughs> like it, dig it, not judging. And I just want to say, let me let me see who's in chat. I will be on the, uh, I will be on the road next week, so I, I don't even know if I'll, I, I won't even be able to tune in. I'll be in heavy traffic. Um, I need somebody to give me a shout out and let me know if Dave talks trash about me. Just send me a message on. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> where's the support? Why can't you download, download and listen to it? Well, yeah, where's when I get support? back home. No, but I need to know right then if you're if you're smack talking me. Or oh, something. mate, I'll text you. Don't worry about it. I'll, yeah. I'll text you. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're such a good guy. You'd, you'd say it to my face first. Dave. Yeah. There we go. Hell yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay, guys, let's wrap it up. Um, I am ready. I, I got to get going anyhow so john it was a pleasure having you on uh i'm sorry to hear that you're friends with dave uh, i apologize for you and <laughs> know he's a wonderful guy and uh but thank you for coming on the show it was a real pleasure to have you on not a, not a problem it's been a pleasure thank you cheers john no problem dave good night guys good night well there you have it everybody uh, i'm gonna bypass the shout outs i have to run um i've got uh, some text messages from Steph so anyhow thank you all for tuning in we'll give shout outs next week thank you all and uh, have a good night